Two days ago, Apple unveiled the new 2023 Macs, MacBook Pros and some Mac Minis. In the last video, we focused on the MacBook Pro, but in this one, it is all about the Mac Mini, which I think is actually the true star of this show. So here are not five, not 10, not 15, but actually 20 things you need to know about the new Mac Mini. Number one is that we actually have not one, but two models of the Mac Mini. The low end, which comes with the M2 chip, and the high end, which comes with the M2 Pro chip, and also a couple of extra features, which I'm going to cover in just a bit. And this higher end model um, now replaces the previous Intel model. So yes, the Intel Mac mini has finally been discontinued. The second thing that you should know is that this Mac mini offers you an insane amount of value, especially the base M2 model. <laughs> That's because Apple now made it cheaper. So now it starts from $600 compared to 700. And even in the UK, where usually, you know, it's everything's more expensive, uh, it is cheaper as well. So 649 pounds compared to 700, which is what it used to cost. But the best part is that if you are a student, you can get it with Apple's educational discount. So in that case, you can get it for $500, which is an insane value for an M2 Mac. The only other M2 Mac, so the MacBook Air M2 and the 13-inch MacBook Pro M2, uh, these are way more expensive. The M2 Mac Mini is essentially half the price of the M2 Air. Then number three, this base M2 Mac Mini actually offers you not the MacBook Air M2's performance, but a 13-inch MacBook Pro's performance, or even better than that. And that's because unlike the MacBook Air, which comes with no fan and uh, the binned eight core GPU, the Mac mini comes with a fan and the full 10 core GPU, just like the MacBook Pro. Over thermals are likely going to be better than on the 13 inch MacBook Pro because we have more space inside and also a more powerful fan. So you should be able to get more performance out of this Mac mini. We will be doing uh, in-depth testing. So do subscribe and stay tuned for that starting from next week. But yeah, essentially this new Mac mini M2 is a 13 inch MacBook Pro to uh, just without a keyboard, screen, and trackpad, and uh, at less than half the cost. Speaking of screens, uh, number four, you can actually connect more external displays now. Previously, with the M1 Mac Mini, you could connect two displays, one 6K through the Thunderbolt port, and then one 4K via the HDMI port. Uh, now with the M2 Mac Mini, you can connect two 6K displays, so that's an upgrade. But then, of course, you also have the higher-end Mac Mini, the M2 Pro model, which allows you to connect three displays now. So two 6K monitors and then one 4K, which is awesome if you're on a Mac that supports three uh, monitors. Because before, if you wanted that, you had to get an M1 Max Mac Studio or uh, an M1 Max 14 or 16-inch MacBook Pro. Number five, we also get more ports with these new Mac Minis. So the base M2 model is unchanged. We get Ethernet, which can be one or 10 gig, up to you when you configure it. And we get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, two USB-A's, and a headphone jack. However, if you upgrade the chip to the M2 Pro, then you get four Thunderbolt 4 ports just like the outgoing Intel model. So this Mac Mini especially is very, very good in terms of connectivity. But speaking of the Intel model, uh, number six, uh, we can say goodbye to the space gray color option because that was also discontinued alongside the Intel Mac Mini, sadly. Now you can only get the Mac Mini in silver, just like the Mac Studio. Then number seven, we also get more storage. So even though the base storage is still 256, uh, now you can upgrade your Mac Mini up to four and eight terabyte of storage options, whereas before uh, the maximum was two terabytes. But this only applies to the M2 Pro model and not the M2, which still maxes out at two terabytes. Then number eight, the Disney Mac Mini also offers you a higher supported refresh rate uh, of 4K 240 Hertz, as opposed to 4K 60, which we had on the previous model. Now, this is thanks to the upgraded HDMI 2.1 port uh, compared to HDMI 2.0. So if you have a high refresh rate 4K monitor, you can connect it to your Mac Mini and even do some gaming, <laughs> thanks to uh, No Man's Sky and Resident Evil 8 now being available on Mac OS. Number nine, a higher resolution. So also, thanks to that upgraded HDMI port, you can now connect up to an 8K monitor at 60 Hertz uh, from the previous 4K 60 Hertz Max that we had uh, through that HDMI port. Number 10, multi-channel audio. So also, thanks to this new HDMI port, you can connect your Mac Mini to a surround sound system and get the full 7.1 surround sound experience. This wasn't doable before, at least through that HDMI port. Then number 11, we likely have a new cooling system inside these new Mac Minis. And that is because we have a difference uh, when it comes to the weight. 
So the M1 Mac Mini had a weight of 1.2 kilograms. The M2 is actually lighter at 1.18, but the M2 Pro is actually heavier at 1.28, likely because of a beefier cooling system. And that is very important because number 12, uh, the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini can also draw more power, up to 185 watts compared to up to 150, which is what the M2 model and the M1 model of the Mac Mini can draw. So, more power draw, a better cooling system. What sort of performance are we actually expecting to see from these new Mac Minis? Well, let's start off with uh, the M2 model. Compared to the M1, we have an 8-core CPU, uh, which Apple claims is 18% faster, and a 10-core GPU up from 8-core, uh, which Apple claims is 35% faster. There's also a brand new neural engine, which is 40% faster, uh, which according to Apple would help with video and image processing. And we also have new media engines for ProRes Encode and Decode. So ProRes work would actually be significantly faster, it stems faster according to Apple, uh, than with the M1 version of the Mac Mini. In terms of real-world usage, Apple claims that Photoshop work is now 50% faster on the M2 Mac Mini. Of course, that we will be doing our own testing to verify and add uh, to these claims as well. Now, when it comes to the M2 Pro model, uh, according to Apple, the CPU is now 1.9 times faster than the M1, and that is because we have a 12-core CPU compared to the 8-core uh, that we had before, and the M2 is also an 8-core chip. When it comes to the GPU, this is now 2.6 times faster than the M1 Mac Mini, uh, as we now have 19 GPU cores compared to 10 on the M2 or 8 on the M1. And according to Apple, this new Mac Mini is now 14 times faster than the fastest configuration of the Intel Mac Mini that they used to sell up until just a few days ago. And in terms of how it compares to the M2 model, uh, code compiling is almost twice as fast, Final Cut exports are twice as fast as the M2 Mac Mini, and Photoshop is 25% faster than the M2 model. So the M2 Mac Mini is a good upgrade over the M1, but the M2 Pro is a significant upgrade over the M1 model. 15, these new Mac Minis also support more RAM. So previously the M1 maxed out at 16 gigabytes. Now with the M2, you can configure it uh, to up to 24 gigabytes of RAM. And when it comes to the M2 Pro version, this can go up to 32 gigabytes. Not only that, but we also have a much faster memory bandwidth. Uh, so on the M1, we had 68 gigabytes per second. On the M2, we now have 100. And with the M2 Pro, we have 200 gigabytes per second. So everything that you do, switching between apps and just loading apps in general, will feel much faster on these new models compared to the M1. Then, speaking of faster, uh, we also have a much faster Wi-Fi at number 16 with Wi-Fi 6E, which is now almost twice as fast at 2.4 gigabits compared to about 1.5 with Wi-Fi 6. And we also get a dedicated 6 gigahertz band, so if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router, uh, you're gonna get significantly less congestion because the new Mac Mini would only use that 6 gigahertz band. And we also get a newer Bluetooth standard with Bluetooth 5.3 as opposed to 5.0, which means that if you have any Bluetooth 5.3 enabled earbuds, such as the AirPods Pro 2s, uh, they would connect a bit faster and consume less power. Then number 18, do avoid the base 256 gigabyte of storage model. And that's because the storage speeds would be half of what you would get with the 512, um, as Apple would very likely be using the same SSD as in the base M2 Air and the base M2 13-inch MacBook Pro. Especially if you keep the RAM at 8 gigabytes, uh, it would use swap memory, and in that case, the storage speed would impact uh, your usage of the new Mac Mini. So do keep all of this in mind. And something else that you should keep in mind is number 19, the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini is by far the best overall choice for creatives. More specifically, the $1,300 version that comes with a 10-core CPU and a 16-core GPU. Yes, this is the bin version, uh, but this actually matches the M1 Pro chip in terms of the CPU and the GPU core count. This version also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And the only other Mac with this version of the M2 Pro chip is the base 14-inch MacBook Pro, which starts from $2,000. So you're essentially saving $700 with this configuration of the Mac Mini, um, and you're likely getting better cooling as well. If you do any 4K video editing, this Mac Mini would easily be able to handle that, uh, even when it comes to complex projects or simple 8K projects, that won't be an issue. A coding, again, won't be an issue. 3D modeling and even some rendering to some extent, as you do have a fast enough CPU and GPU for that. So this is a great overall machine for 
creatives. So how does this compare to the Mac Studio? Well, the Mac Studio starts from $2,000 and it comes with the M1 Max chip, not the M2 Max, very interesting. So they will likely be updating that at some point in the near future. But yeah, that's the 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, you do get more ports with the Mac Studio as you do get an extra SD card reader and two extra USB-C ports on the front. You also get a better cooling system, but also a slightly more outdated HDMI port, which is 2.0 and maxes out at 4K 60. Now, here's the thing. If you configure a Mac Mini with similar specs, which would be 32 gigs of RAM, the 12 core M2 Pro CPU and the 19 core GPU, so essentially a better CPU, but a worse GPU, um, it would cost you the same. $2,000. So you might as well just get the Mac Studio in that case. As do keep in mind that those extra CPU cores that the Mac Mini comes with, those are only efficiency cores, so you're not really going to notice that much of a, an improvement in your everyday workflow uh, because the high performance cores are still the same number. So in that case, the absolute best M2 Pro Mac Mini configuration is indeed the base model with a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And if you really want to upgrade anything, I would say upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes but even that would bump the price to $1,700, which is just $300 less than the Mac Studio. And by the way, if you do want to get some great deals on the Mac Studio, you can find them by tapping on the YouTube shoppable cards down below. But yeah, do check out our MacBook Pro video as well. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.